First of all, uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, I will do a short presentation for the people that are listening to us. Mr. Lucius Meiser is the chairman of the crypto investment firm Bitcoin Swiss. So the company was founded in 2013 and uh, is the most trusted gateway to invest in Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, today, we're going to talk about an important topic that regards Bitcoin as store of value. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Lutus, uh, we know that um, around, uh, la around two years ago, uh, you have proposed to the Swiss National Bank to buy uh, 1 billion of Swiss francs of Bitcoins each month. Um, what are the characteristics that uh, you see in Bitcoin regarding its potential and current role as store of value? And uh, how does it compare to the traditional uh, asset like gold, bonds or also uh, fiat currency in uh, this regard? Yes, so uh, thanks uh, for hosting me. Uh, just uh, call me Lucius, that's e easier. No, Lutius. Mr. Meiss or anything. So, yes. So, uh, Yes, excellent question. So the Swiss National Bank has a lot of reserves. And unfortunately, most of these reserves are held in euro and dollar instruments, mostly bonds. And this is a bad investment. So in the past 10 years, they lost like 100 billion on these investments. And because the Swiss franc is stronger than these other currencies and uh, in the modest interest rate that uh, they could earn didn't compensate for the loss in value of these currencies. And that's also what everyone else experiences. If you live in the Eurozone, if you live in the dollar zone, it, the value of your currency declines faster than uh, the additional money you get from the bank in interest or even I'm not, so, so I think it, uh, even uh, the increase in salaries cannot compensate for the loss in purchasing power. So I think it's quite natural to try to seek different currencies, different reserve assets. And here a Bitcoin really stands out. So initially Bitcoin was conceived as a payment system. So Satoshi Nakamoto said, let's create a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And But over time, the more relevant part of that has been the store of wealth. So it's not used so much for uh, the payments. It's much more used for storing as a reserve asset to store wealth and here it competes with the traditional asset gold so to me bitcoin is a digital gold and for the, as such it's it's perfect as a reserve asset for the national banks and national banks additionally always held gold swiss constitution says the national bank must hold some gold they have sold quite a bit at the worst possible time. So there was a time in the 90s where it was fashionable for Central Bank to sell gold and to buy stocks because during the 90s stocks only went up and then there was the big uh, dot com crash. And Swiss National Bank, because in Switzerland uh, decisions often take a little longer, was more or less the last national bank to sell and they sold their gold at like $400 uh, dollars per ounce, uh, which is a fraction of today's price. And it went up ever since. So this was the worst timing uh, that, uh, that, that you could uh, choose. So it's, it's yeah. uh, yes. of course, in hindsight, it's easy to tell, but it, it, it's not a good track record. Fortunately, they kept uh, half of the gold, uh, which is still there and is still appreciating in value. And I think they should add uh, Bitcoin to their reserves because that's much more robust than uh, the fiat currencies. I, I completely agree with you. We completely agree with you. And um, well, yeah, of course, they have to hold some amount of gold because, uh, well, uh, you, you cannot have only reserves in euro or, or some, some kind of, of, of bonds. 
but um, basically they, they had they had some historical losses by, by holding euro and, and, and bonds. Um, what do you think that is the main reason of being uh, so conservative and not uh, uh, having something different as as Bitcoin? What are the reasons, the arguments uh, about about uh, about this? W they are quite conservative, correct? Correct me if I'm yes. wrong. Yes. So their mandate is just to keep the Swiss franc stable. They don't have a mandate to make profits. They don't have a mandate to watch unemployment rates like the European Central Bank has. It's just about the stability of the Swiss franc. And just looking at that metric, uh, their policy is very successful. Makes sense. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And um, in, in your, from your point of view, um, what are the compelling arguments uh, that we must do in order to convince the Swiss National Bank to start investing in, in Bitcoin? And um, what are the, the concerns that uh, you can address regarding the Bitcoin volatility? and the potential risk of uh, the Swiss franc uh, to uh, the, the potential risk and rewards of the Swiss franc uh, if the S uh, Swiss National Bank were to diversify its reserves in Bitcoin. So, I mean, there's two different levels where you can try to argue. One is the rational level where you just say, from a financial mathematical perspective, it's a better investment than a bond that is basically guaranteed to lose value. So, and here it's important to note that if you invest into the Eurozone and buy Euro bonds, then you're buying into a currency where the issuer has a strong incentive to devalue it. And they will devalue it to the degree that they can get away with. The same holds for the US dollar. The US government has a strong incentive to devalue the dollar just a little less than uh, the breaking point. So if they devalue it too much and people lose trust in it, they lose the reserve currency status. So, but if they can play with this a little, so they will go quite to the limit, but don't step over it. That's the optimal policy for them to just, and by that they, Sickly take money out of the pocket of all the dollar investors. This is to a certain degree China and Japan and many foreign investors that hold uh, dollar bonds. And yes. of course, I think the Swiss National Bank shouldn't be part of this game. So just rationally, they should move into other assets. It could also be stocks and they do some stocks investment. But uh, with stocks, it's it's uh, it's hard to choose the right one. It also gets political. For example, they say we don't buy any Swiss stocks. They also don't buy any Swiss government bonds. But then you have the political problem, and this is something I pointed out at their last General Assembly, that when you only buy foreign bonds, you actually start financing foreign government spending. And this is a political problem, in my opinion. It might be financially, uh, an okay decision, but politically, I think in the long run, this is uh, this is difficult, and it also shows that maybe the orientation point for the decision takers at the national bank is to a certain degree the international relations. So before they take a decision, they don't make a poll among Swiss citizens, they might call Mario Draghi, uh, the yes. now, so whoever is in power or Janet Yellen and coordinate with them. So in the end, it's their orientation point is international financial policy. And that makes it politically, and this is now the political layer, very hard for them to take the decision to go into Bitcoin, even if it's the rational one. So, and that means we also have to play on a political level. And in Switzerland, we have the fortunate situation that we have 
as the people, as the citizens, we have political tools that yes. others don't have. And one of these is the what we call the initiative and uh, is uh, internationally called the referendum. Yes, Very in fact, in fact I, I have a specific question about the referendum. So uh, basically, um, as you have previously mentioned, um, that getting to the Swiss National Bank to adopt Bitcoin might even require a public referendum. So the question is, what are the steps that you believe that are necessary to, to build this public support coming from the bottom for these initiatives? And how do you plan to address the skepticism and misinformation about Bitcoin um, among the general public and policy makers and, and obviously all the, the, the people from, uh, from uh, Swiss? Yeah, so a referendum is a very long journey. So from the time of its inception until the actual vote, it can take 10 years. So that means we also need to plan very carefully. And it's so the process is that you formulate a text. So a referendum is always a proposal to change the constitution. So you need to formulate a proposal to change the constitution. Then maybe you let a lawyer or another expert check it if it's actually legally sound. Then you file it with the government and they check it again and they say, yes, it's good. And then you need to assemble an initiative committee. Uh, that, that's the official body that supports this referendum. And you can start collecting signatures and you need to collect at least 100,000 valid signatures within 18 months. And this is not something one person can do alone because these signatures have to be physical paper signatures. You can, there's no digital process yet. So this takes a lot of work and takes a budget of uh, maybe a million. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So it, it, it's obviously uh, there's needed a plan in order to give the right information to the people, uh, telling them that um, what is the what is Bitcoin, what is uh, the store of value that Bitcoin has shown us in the last years. So uh, I completely agree with you. It's it's uh, obviously a long journey. Yes. It's an, an investment, but it's a, yes, yes, please. So it, it's two stages in this political process. In the first stage, you need to have the 100,000 signatures. That means this is about mobilizing those who already like Bitcoin. Yes. And this yes. is harder than it sounds because some Bitcoin maximalists, they say they are so libertarian that they say, we don't want to interfere with the government. We want yes. the government to leave us alone and we leave the government alone. They should do what they want. If they buy stupid government bonds, we don't care. If, they, if our national bank loses a lot of money, we don't care. And here my answer is, we are part of the state whether we want or not. We are forced to pay taxes and we cannot easily escape. Of course, we can move somewhere else, but as, as long as we choose to live here, we have duties that we cannot ex escape, but we also have rights that we cannot escape and that we can make use of. And there's no shame in using a right to influence the government if you also pay taxes and, and, and have other duties. So I think this is a valid approach. Uh, it, it's it's uh, even so it, there's maybe even a moral duty that if you recognize an opportunity that you help the government and the state move into the right direction because you're part of that nation so why why don't you help your country a little so i, I think this is so this is the mobilization part so in the first part we need to mobilize those who already like bitcoin and i heard the statistic that 17 percent of all swiss already own some bitcoins and that means there's a large pool of potential signatories that would probably be willing to sign this initiative if you encounter them at the train station or wherever else you are collecting the signatures so i think this is possible the much harder part is then the other part if it comes to the actual referendum and the actual vote 
how do you convince the majority of the population to vote yes? And this will be very tough. And oftentimes, referendums in Switzerland end with a compromise. So what could happen is that, and now the initiative committee, these uh, maybe 17 people, whatever the number is, plays a role because they have the legal right to withdraw the referendum. So the, politicans, the politicians approach them and say, look, if you withdraw your referendum, we propose this and this law and uh, pass it through parliament. So this is the negotiation phase where politicians try to, to maybe win the support of the Bitcoiners through a compromise or might propose other measures. So, and if that phase succeeds and there's a reasonable proposal, then that's that's a very good outcome because it means you don't need to spend another five years and maybe five million on a big uh, campaign. Yes. But if it fails, if there's no compromise to be reached, it, there will be a vote at some point in time where the federal council actually decide what the exact date is and often they time the date of that vote politically. So together with other votes that might uh, mobilize the, this or that group of voters. So this is a political game. And to win that vote, it, uh, it, it's, I think today, if there was this vote would take place today, we would not win. This is pretty clear because we don't have the majority support. But we have to be aware that this vote will maybe take place in the year 2029. In the next so. crypto summer, I hope so. I, I hope so. And uh, thank you very much. That that makes absolutely sense. Uh, it's not going to be a, a, a really easy journey. Um, I would like to add something personal to to what is what is Bitcoin and how uh, it will perform uh, for for the next years. Um, I think that uh, maybe in less than 10 years, uh, we will see uh, a major adoption uh, as store of value from many, 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 many other countries. Um, let me explain um, quickly. Uh, I think that Bitcoin is going to be the worldwide basket reserve uh, where um, inside we will see uh, a lot of uh, U US dollars, euro uh, and other other um, currency, uh, fiat currency around the world. So to me, to me, it's a person to me, Bitcoin is like a basket where all the currency will flow in and uh, it's gonna take maybe um, from five to ten years in order to see um, big countries uh, putting their reserves into Bitcoin because uh, we are currently in, in, a, in, a, in a great cycle where um, the major capitalism uh, from the United States it's it's entering the um, the market uh, through the spot ETF in the United States. We know that over there in the, in the US um, it's where all the the large amount of money are are present at the moment. So um, in this year, maybe in the next year, we will see one of the biggest inflow of uh, fiat currency into into uh, Bitcoin. So um, after afterwards, uh, maybe in the next cycle, as as you said earlier, we will see the uh, the, the the countries uh, with the, their own national bank putting. Um, money and assets into into converting them into into bitcoin so absolutely I agree and i think that if it's not a referendum it will be the own state that will decide to to move on that direction uh, in the next five to ten years in the next bull market probably okay great um so um Let's go back to, to, to Swiss and um, the next question regards, uh, do, do you uh, see some geopolitical consequence if Switzerland uh, were significantly investing in Bitcoin? Let's make an hypothesis that in, uh, the referendum will pass and the Swiss National Bank will decide to, okay, let's, let's 
um, dedicate one billion each month and um, and let's have this Bitcoin reserves. Do you see any geopolitical consequence for Switzerland uh, from the European or the global point of view? Yes, of course, because it, it's basically showing the other national banks the finger kind of. So <laughs> it's, it, imagine the headline in the Wall Street Journal, Swiss National Bank buys Bitcoins dumps the euro or dumps the dollar this is this will have an impact and for switzerland the political long-term impact is entirely positive it means that switzerland is less dependent on the policies of other countries it can make policies more on its own it is less pressured to take part in international decisions like if if there's a war between two countries often switzerland is pressured to take sides and part of that pressure comes of course from the dependency when we have hundreds of billions of euros and dollars we cannot easily tell washington sorry we don't take part in that uh, we, we have our own opinion and if you remove that dependency then uh, we gain a lot of political freedom and independence. So this is the long-term effect. But the short-term effect is, is, of course, that others uh, dislike that decision and, and, and uh, would try to put Switzerland under pressure to not actually implement it. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, another question, uh, it regards the, the major institutions like BlackRock, for example, and other prominent financial firms uh, launching the Bitcoin ETFs. And um, it's a simple question. Uh, how do you see the impact of the overall acceptance and the Bitcoin or, uh, and acceptance and adoption of, of Bitcoin as mainstream financial asset? Uh, what are the potential benefits? and the challenges that uh, a Bitcoin ETF uh, uh, will do to the um, traditional assets. What is going to be the, the basically the influence to the global perception of Bitcoin? So it's a very natural step if there's customers who demand uh, Bitcoin products and to be able to invest into Bitcoin, then of course banks should offer these products. and. The SEC should have approved the first ETF 10 years ago. It's more than 10 years since the first ETF application was filed. And this shows how completely broken today's financial system is. If you have such a simple idea, it's just an ETF is nothing else but a company that holds a lot of Bitcoins and you can trade the shares of this company. Why does it take 10 years to approve that? It's, it shows that this is a very political and broken process and uh, it, it's, it's uh, astonishing that it even works. So somehow it seems to work still somewhat, but it, it's, it's clearly something that could be dramatically improved and where there's way too much regulation and paragraphs holding everyone down. And I think overall for our Western society, one of the biggest risks is that at some point we will collapse under the weight of our own regulation. Because the more regulation you add, it's like it leads for the economy, it's like death through 1000 needle stitches. It's not, you can never say this paragraph or this regulation killed the economy, but if there's thousands of them, it slows everything down. And, yes, uh, and uh, maybe you also have an Italian perspective yes. on this yes. because I think in Italy, Italy, this is also 
somewhat of an issue. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it's one of the biggest lack uh, that we have in the in in this in this kind of uh, of of, uh, of discussion. We have a, we have a big problem of of too much bureaucracy ongoing. So um, this is one of the the biggest pro problem that we 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 have, and uh, investors uh, really feel this. And uh, well, as you as you know, uh, they are not so uh, well to 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 come to us. Uh, so y you got you got a great point of uh, of the topic. And uh, okay, so I would like to make you my last question. And um, looking looking ahead to the future, let's say to two thousand to two uh, thousand one hundred. As you mentioned. Uh, um, uh, what is your long-term vision for Bitcoin in the global economy? What role do you do you see for Bitcoin? Uh, uh, is it's going to be more stable? Uh, what is going to be uh, the the perspective for the future next generation? And what advice what advice do you give to other uh, financial leaders and policymakers? Who are still on the fence about Bitcoin? They are afraid. They don't know, and uh, they try to uh, not talk about it. So I think the positive scenario is that Bitcoin becomes very, very boring. That the, at the today it's still quite volatile, but at some point in time it will just be the most boring reserve asset ever. And in the year 2099, the young generation will probably trade some meme stocks or meme coin because it's exciting and goes up and down. And Bitcoin is just the asset that you move into when you have no idea what else to trade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I think that this would be a very good outcome. And, and in such a scenario, Bitcoin would trade very, very high in the millions, probably because uh, or the dozens of millions per Bitcoin, mostly because the fiat currency has a tendency to go towards zero in the depreciate, long run. depreciate itself. Yes. And what advice would you give to other uh, big uh, financial leaders and policymakers worldwide about the uh, the next so 100 years? The, my biggest advice would be to follow the Swiss approach. And the Swiss approach is be aware that you don't know everything, that you cannot direct the economy top down. You should the most so you can establish some principles. So there's fair uh, interaction between market participants and that there's common rules that you can adhere to. But they should not try to shape the economy because all forms of central planning are doomed to fail sooner or later. So, and Switzerland has a very principle-based approach where it doesn't try to regulate every new technology, where it doesn't try to uh, define every detail on how things should be done. It sets up a few principles and then it trusts the citizens to apply these principles and to do well. So the best world is one where the policymakers uh, go on holiday and take a rest and say, let, we won't stand in the way of good things being done. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lucius, for, for replying to my questions. And uh, yes, uh, something that I would like to add regarding volatility is something that uh, people, people, the people usually, they don't think about it. But when the um, uh, Dow Jones was invented, so we are talking about the, the in the 1900, um, also the Dow Jones were very volatile, very similar to Bitcoin volatile. Of course, it was a different time. There were wars between them and uh, a global uh, instability, but they have some similar part patterns. So uh, absolutely, we have to keep in mind that each sector, each big market at, the, at his uh, beginning, they, they were very volatile, very, very volatile as Bitcoin it is right now. And I completely agree with you uh, by saying that in a hundred years, Bitcoin will be so strong, so important that it's going to be really, really hard to make 
big oscillations up and down um, and moving the price very 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 hard so it's just uh, the the beginning it's maybe gonna take 20 years 30 years but it will mm, come to stabilize and have uh, like a, a, a normal growth uh, and probably we will see like one percent downtrend it's gonna be the, the biggest uh, uh, fall uh, of, of the of the Bitcoin or uh, up up or, or the other side so um, I, I completely agree with you and uh, thank you very much for 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 having me thank you uh, it was very nice talking to you